Howdy, everybody. Welcome back to Accounting 1101. I'm Professor Martin. We have a brand new week of accounting coming up here, a brand new topic that we're going to be working on, talking about the adjusting process. Now, I'm going to make a video right now showing you kind of an overview of what the process is and why we need it. And then we'll make a few more videos where it kind of shows you what we're doing in depth, step by step, and how to make it happen. So we're all about the adjusting process here this week in account. Before we get into that, let's take a step back and talk about where we've been. Now, we've done a lot of accounting up to this point. We've talked about journalizing transactions, and we talked about how to take those journal entries and post them over to the ledger accounts. And we showed you how to kind of calculate ending balances in the ledger accounts there and how to do all that good accounting. And we did a good job. We did everything right. And we ended up with what's called an unadjusted trial balance, where we tabulated the ending balances on every account in our accounting system. We found out, hey, the ending debits equal the ending credits. And we're all good. But that was an unadjusted trial balance. And that un part should kind of give you a hint that there's something left that needs to be done. Now, you might say, well, well, hold on a second, Professor Martin. We did all this good accounting. You told me everything we'd done was right. Why in the heck is there more to do? Ah, uh, well, that's what I'm going to explain to you right now. First of all, our plan, understanding adjusting entries. We need to understand the process, why we do it. We need to understand the entries that we make, and we need to understand the adjusted trial balance. All right, so there's a few things we need to kind of fill in here in order to wrap up our month of accounting. So we'll start here with that unadjusted trial balance. And just to give you a few examples of scenarios, why we need to make adjusting entries and why we need to go through the process at the end of the month. First of all, you know we have a supplies account, right? Asset account, the uh, supplies that we buy, we stick them in a supply closet and we use them up throughout the month. When we have them in the closet, we haven't used them up, it's an asset, right? It's some kind of property uh, item that we can use to run the business. So we have a supply closet. Right now we have $2,000 in that supply closet in supplies. Post-it notes, pens, printer ink, whatever you want to think of. All right. That's sitting in our supply closet and we paid 2000 bucks for those supplies that are sitting in our supply closet. So let's say that uh, we've been using supplies out of the closet as the month went along. Well, obviously, it's not really efficient every time we want to grab a pack of post-it notes to make an entry, an accounting entry for that, you know, for a $1 pack of post-it notes. And so instead of making a journal entry and journalizing and posting that every time we grab an ink pen or a pack of post-it notes, we wait until the end of the period, the end of the month, and then we'll make an entry to reflect what we've used up. That's an adjusting entry. We have to do that because we know that that $2,000 isn't reality. We've been using up supplies. We can't just leave $2,000 on that balance sheet, right, on supplies if we know we don't have $2,000 worth because we've used them. So we've got to make a little entry there. Need for an adjustment. Another account that has a need for an adjustment at the end of the month. We have an asset account for prepaid insurance. We bought a year-long insurance policy, paid for it up front, 2400 bucks. Well, we use it up month by month, don't we? Some time has passed, a month has passed, and we're still showing $2,400 in that prepaid insurance. But we've used up a month of it. The accounting records need to reflect what we've used up, just like supplies. We paid for it up front, and now we need to reflect what we used up. We got to make an adjustment. How about one more? We have an unearned rent liability in our accounting records. We took money from a tenant, 360 bucks, that was going to represent three entire months of rent. We took all their money at one time, but we haven't done anything for them yet because they haven't used up that rent. All right, so we have a liability there for unearned rent. Now one month has passed. We've earned a month of that rent. We're no longer liable for three entire months. We're only liable for two months. 
The accounting records need to reflect that that liability has gone down and we've earned one month of rent. We got to make an adjustment. All right, so those are a few scenarios where the accounting records, even though we've done a great job, don't get me wrong, the accounting we've done has been chef's kiss. It's been perfect. Even though we've been perfect, we still have to make adjustments at the end of the month to kind of reflect reality in the circumstances that have happened. All right. And it all goes back to this idea of the accrual basis of accounting, which is what we use for GAAP. We follow accrual accounting. In accrual accounting, revenues and expenses are reported in the period they happen, regardless of whether or not money has traded hands. All right. So what that means is basically the expenses that we incur in generating revenue are reported in the same period as the revenue that has been generated. It's called matching. We're trying to match up the expenses with the revenue. All right. We're trying to make sure that revenue that we've generated, expenses that have happened, are recorded in the period they have happened in, regardless of whether or not money has traded hands. That's the idea behind accrual accounting, which is what we use in GAAP. Now, there's also a cash basis of accounting. Really small businesses may use that in your personal individual taxes. You're probably a cash basis taxpayer. That means you recognize income when you get a dollar in your hand. You recognize expenses when you pay that dollar. All right. Accrual accounting, that's not the way it works. We recognize revenue and expenses when they happen in the month they happen, regardless of whether or not a dollar trades hands. So adjusting, the adjusting process is analyzing and updating the accounts at the end of the accounting period to reflect current circumstances. Hey, we've used up supplies. We need to make an adjustment for that. Hey, we've used up a month of that insurance. We need to make an adjustment for that. The adjusting entries are the journal entries we make to bring the accounts up to date at the end of the period. So that's the adjusting process. We're going to be making entries to bring the accounting records up to date. And these adjusting entries are kind of unique. We make them at the end of the period before we make the financial statements. And they're not really triggered by some kind of transaction. You know, it's not like a customer walks in and pays and we record the revenue and we record the cash. It's not like that. We have to analyze the accounting records to see what needs to be done. That makes it a little bit tricky. The other thing I want to point out about adjusting entries right here, every adjusting entry we do will affect one balance sheet account and one income statement account. I'll say that again. It's important. Every adjusting entry that you do will affect one balance sheet account and one income statement account. And we'll show you that as we go along and practice all of our adjusting entries. Two categories of two types of adjusting entries that we're going to be tackling. We have accruals and deferrals. And these are two separate categories of entries under accrual adjusting entries. Revenue or an expense has happened, but has not been recorded. And it says by our first typo. We made it three entire weeks of accounting without a typo. Revenue or expense has happened, but has not been recorded in the accounting records. We are accruing a revenue or an expense. Accrue is a fancy accounting word that means added in. All right. And so we have a revenue, we have an expense that's happened, but we haven't recorded in the records yet. We're simply adding it in. We're adding it into the accounting records. Deferral. Cash has traded hands, but revenue or expense hasn't happened yet. Okay. Or cash, a dollar has went from one party to the other, but the revenue or expense, it hasn't happened. We are deferring that revenue or expense. Defer means wait until later. We'll book the revenue or expense later when it actually happens. So we're going to do a separate video for both. We're going to do a video for the accruals and we're going to do a video for the deferrals. We're going to show you examples of the entries that happen and how to make them. Adjusting entries. Good time. So that's where we're going. We'll have a video, like I said, accruals. We'll talk about receivables and payables. We'll talk about deferrals, a couple examples of that, prepaid expenses unearned revenue and then finally we'll wrap up with a video about depreciating fixed assets we'll talk about the definition why we depreciate and we'll talk about the adjusting entry for that so three videos coming up good times will be had by all or your money back
money back guarantee not valid in Ohio. As always, if you have any questions about what we're working on in the homework or what you hear in the video, I'm just a click away. Send me an email. We can talk about it via email. We can set up a Zoom, a Teams meeting, however you want to discuss the issues that you might be having. Uh, next video, we'll talk about those adjusting entries for accruals. I hope to see you all back here for that. Until then, take care, everybody.